Hi, Charles is the Book Sage here. It is Monday, July 20th, 2020, and this is my uh, weekend recap video. Uh, if this is your first time here, my name is Charles. This is my Sir Book Sage booktube channel. I concentrate mostly on sci fi and fantasy, though I also delve into a lot of other um, styles as well, a lot of other genres. So hit that like and subscribe. And now let's get into the video. I said in my Friday reads that I was suddenly in a mood reading mood. I guess reading mood. Mood reading reading mood? Is that how that goes? <laughs> um, where I really didn't know what I was going to read. I did crack open the Honor Harrington book, read a couple of pages, but I knew just as much as I'm enjoying that, I just wasn't in the mood for it. And then on my lunch break on Friday, I ended up watching a two Brody's uh, video that he posted where he talks about his frustration and anger as a Native American booktuber and book reviewer. And I'll link his video down below. And interestingly, or I had added Rebecca Roan Horses to um, Sixth World Books to my TBR next year shelf uh, in Goodreads earlier that day. I've been wanting to read these Rebecca Roan Horse books. I have some of my booktube friends are reading them. Um, and are really enjoying them and but I know there's like two more coming out so and Trail of Lightning almost made it into my top five most anticipated reads for the second half of 2020 but I made the decision no I'm gonna hold off until next year so hopefully the third one will be out and then I'll only have one more to go to wait for um, but after watching Brody's video and thinking more about it I realized no that's what I'm in the mood to read so I bought Trail of Lightning and Storm of Locusts on ebook and on Audible while I was at work Friday. And then when I got home Friday night, I sat down, ate a quick dinner, and opened up Trail of Lightning and read the entire book straight through in one sitting Friday night. Um, I absolutely loved it, gave it four stars. Now it's written in first person present tense, which is a POV style I'm really not a fan of, but it really works uh, for this story and for the main character, Maggie. Um, Trail of Lightning takes place in a sort of post-apocalyptic dystopian um, North America, or what's left of it. You had a, it's like the big earthquake finally came and broke like the United States in pieces, and then a big, huge, like biblical level flood event took place. So most of the U.S. is like gone. Two-thirds of it are underwater. Maggie is one of the Navajo, or the Diné, and their reservation to a series of events ended up surviving all this. One of the side effects of these cataclysmic events is all the old myths and the gods and everything of the Diné people have woken up. So you have gods roaming around and all sorts of mystical, magical things. Some of the um, Diné, the Navajo, have... Um, clan powers where these um, sort of abilities have awakened in them often triggered for the first time through a traumatic or violent event and the main character Maggie is she's kind of a monster hunter uh, she as she describes herself like right at the beginning of the book she says you know I'm not a hero I'm who they call after the heroes come home in body bags and she has a couple of different clan powers. One where it makes her like super human speed. So, which helps in when she's fighting things that aren't human. But there's a second one where it's basically this killing power. And which comes in real, really in handy when she's in the middle of a supernatural fight. But kind of gets in the way when someone insults her and that power is like, kill him, kill him, kill him. You know, and she, so she's got to combat that desire that's kind of built into her now and but really great story really great supporting cast uh, great world building you have a lot of Navajo references um, which I really appreciate that Rebecca Roanhorse didn't stop the action to info dump us with what these things really mean and I because this was one of my problems with Nevernight is at least with the audible where all the footnotes are read where they belong which just stops the action repeatedly so I really appreciate that Rebecca didn't do that here there's enough context in the action and what's happening for the reader like me who doesn't know anything about the um, 
Navajo culture to get a gist of what these things are, enough for the story. And it's up to me to research them after the fact, which I did a little bit. I ended up watching a bunch of videos on the Navajo, like this old, this old guy talking about it. But anyway, I'm digressing. Um, this, again, this story was a page turner, four stars. I think my only quibble was the final confrontation was over in like a blink of an eye. Uh, but I've been thinking about it since, and it does kind of make sense. It's like, you know, when you go up against a god, you pretty much only have one shot. You know, like the Eminem song, I guess. So it's going to be over quick one way or the other. So I guess that makes sense. And um, Saturday, once I was able to sit down and read, I opened up Storm of Locust and read that straight through in one shot. And loved that as well. I gave that a four star as well. And it takes place about a month after the events of Trail of Lightning. And in this one, they actually leave the res, and it's sort of a road trip um, story where they're trying to rescue um, some of their friends. So it's a very different vibe because they're not on the reservation now. And I actually enjoyed Trail of Lightning slightly more. So Trail of Lightning was four stars. Um, Storm of Locusts, I gave like, let's say 3.95 stars. Just a slight preference for the first book. And probably mainly because it all took place on the reservation. And that was a little more interesting to me than them like roaming down Route 66 and um, what was happening there. Um, but again, it's more world building, more side characters. You get to see a bit more of what's happening outside their reservation on the other side of their wall. Um, so I'm really curious to see where this story is going to go because I know there's going to be two more books. And I'm definitely going to be buying Black Sun when that comes out. I mean, though it's a, I think it's a new series she's starting. Um, but I'm definitely going to get that now. She's now, with just these two books, become like a must-buy author for me. So, when I finished Storm of Locusts, I went to BookTube and watched a couple of videos. One of them was Bookish Porcupines, um, Mid-Year Freakout tag video. And she recommended this next book that I bought and started reading, which is Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the World, or Punches a Hole in the Sky, I believe. And this is a book where it's Tristan Strong. He's a young black kid from Chicago. Uh, who ends up, it's his best friend Eddie had just recently died in a tragic accident and he's riddled with guilt because he felt he could have saved him and failed and his father is a boxer, his grandfather was a boxer and he's just had his first boxing match and lost so they ship him down with the grandparents to Alabama to like teach him discipline and make him work <laughs> and um, basically he gets down there and he, he has Eddie's journal, his best friend's journal with him, which he hasn't opened because it's glowing green and he's the only one who can see this glow. So he gets down there and in the middle of the night, this little sort of creature doll thing sneaks into his room to steal the journal and it's Gum Baby. And he gives chase. And through a series of events, Tristan, in his anger, cracks open a portal back to where Gum Baby was from. Uh, and down into the portal they both go. And Tristan discovers this realm where all these like African American legends like John Henry uh, are real. And also West African gods like Anansi are real. Plus there's like Br'er Rabbit and, and all that stuff as well. So it's really, really cool setup. Really, really cool um, landscape and characters. And Tristan is dropped in the middle of all this. And he's inadvertently made things worse for them because they're in this sort of war. And uh, his actions have really imperiled everybody. And it goes from there. Or he wants his buddy's journal back. And I read about 80 pages Saturday night. And then my sister called. And conversations from, with my sister are rarely under three hours. So that was the end of my reading for Saturday. And then I picked it back up again Sunday afternoon, and I think I got up to about 200, page 258. So I'm a little more than halfway through. I think this is going to be a five-star read. Um, I know the second Tristan book is coming out very soon. I'm definitely going to be getting that. Um, thank you to Krista Bookish Porcupine. Again, I'll, I'll link her hashtag, her um, t 
tag video down below. Um, and so overall, for a mood reading weekend, it was pretty productive. So let's break down the stats. I ended up reading 884 pages, which is, that's a lot read in a weekend for me. Uh, finished two books, um, halfway through the third. Purchased um, both books, The Trail of Lightning, Storm of Locusts, on ebook and Audible. Purchased Tristan Strong on ebook and Audible, so that's three books purchased. Plus, I pre-ordered um, Ilazzo from Darcy Little Badger. Um, that looks really interesting, so I pre-ordered that book. And I also bought a graphic novel, but I'm not going to tell you what that is because that's part of my special October reading month that's coming up. So keep an eye out for that announcement video. And I have to say, Kwame Mbalia is just a really great writer. This Tristan Strong book, it's quick, it's funny, there's a lot of humor in it. I mean, Gum Baby just cracks me up. In some alternate reality somewhere, Steven Erickson and Kwame Mbalia have gotten together and are collaborating and writing a novella featuring Kruppa from Malazan and Gum Baby from Tristan, where they go on a, uh, like a road trip together in, on a quest. I just, I want that story. I just think of the sheer just joy and entertainment of Kruppa and Gum Baby teamed up together <laughs> on an adventure. And um, yeah, so I also bought a new lens or a used lens, which hopefully will show up before next weekend. For the people who are interested in tech behind the scenes stuff, I'm actually filming on a Fuji X-T1 uh, and this is a Samyang 12mm f2.0 lens. Great photography lens, especially for the Fuji. And I, um, but it's a manual focus lens. So I wanted to get the, I bought the XC1545, which is a kit lens for some of their lower end cameras. It's a consumer lens, not a professional lens like my 35 f2. Um, but I'm going to give it a go. It's going to become my main vlogging lens, hopefully. And between the 15 and 45 range, it will let me, with that one lens, film in like the sort of three different spots I've got um, to film videos in this apartment so far. But anyway, I am going to wrap it up here real quick. A super productive reading weekend, especially for a mood reading weekend for me. And I'm hoping to finish the Tristan book before the weekend comes, the next weekend comes. And then we'll see what I'm going to read then. Anyway, I can see by the timer that I'm about to run out of uh, <laughs> video time, so I'm going to wrap it up here real quick. I am Charles of Sir Booksage. Happy reading. <laughs>